If you hate playing left-handed players in tennis, then you've clicked on exactly the right video because I'm gonna be doing a real-life point play breakdown in which I show you how left-handed players engineer their points to be as frustrating to play as possible and win as many matches as possible. If you haven't already seen the first video in the series, watch it first because it lays the groundwork in terms of patterns, in terms of geometry, in terms of targets, and it's critical to understand that part first. And before we jump right in, I just want to give a big shout out to Dylan at Dill Plays YouTube channel. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and make sure you go subscribe to his channel as well. He's constantly uploading great match footage like this and it's really fun to deconstruct. So this left-handed player playing against Dylan, as we discussed in the first part of this special series, what he really wants, he's got his forehand right here and when he hits cross courts on a high percentage pattern, which gives him the low net, which gives him the long court, which means his recovery, he's already in the right position, all those benefits are all checked off. When he goes cross court, he's able to target Dylan's backhand. And this is what we discussed in the first video. So once this point starts, he is just honing in like a laser. This shot right here, he moved around a significant amount to be able to hit this as a forehand instead of a backhand, which illustrates right off the bat that he very much would prefer forehands. He is trying to hit as many shots as possible from this side of the court and target them as often as possible to that side of the court. And that, in a nutshell, Speaking as a left-handed player myself, that is our tactic. That is our go-to pattern of play. So as he moves around that backhand to hit a forehand instead, there's visually a big chunk of open space here to Dylan's right. And frankly, Dylan would probably not mind getting a shot over there. And a lot of players in this position would take the bait and go here. But this left-handed player is smarter than that. He realizes that by keeping the pattern on this directional, he's able to maintain the upper hand. And once he establishes that pattern, if he sits on it, he knows the chances of him winning the point increase every single time he hits the ball. So that's why he keeps the ball back in the direction that it came from and back in the direction that Dylan is already just sitting there waiting for the ball because he knows he gets to target Dylan's backhand with his forehand. And so shot after shot, he just sits on it. And Dylan here had an opportunity to change that pattern and almost looked like maybe he tried to change it. And he forces kind of an awkward slice here from the lefty. Left-hand player didn't try super hard to get around this. Interesting, if you watch the full highlights on Dylan's channel, you'll see he almost kind of has, has like a Bernard Tomic kind of uh, casual kind of style play about him, kind of interesting. but. Uh, here, open stance, backhand slice. Again, wide open court over here. Watch where he aims this shot. Just kind of a casual slice and just chips it, floats it back over to this corner. You can see the intent here. He's just trying to establish this pattern and isolate Dylan in his backhand corner. And just he's basically just telling him, hit more backhands, hit more backhands, hit more backhands, stay over here, stay over here. I'm not done with you yet. Just go ahead and stay in that corner. And so as this point uh, continues, he just leans on that pattern. And this is just the classic lefty setup. Their forehand to Dylan's backhand. And in this particular instance, Dylan just eventually just made the unforced error. And that's kind of option number one for the left-handed player. Find the beneficial pattern and just sit on it and just continue going. High percentage shot, my strength, their weakness. My strength, their weakness. And this is reason number one why left-handed players are so frustrating to play. Here's another example of that kind of pattern isolation. I'll go ahead and just play the point through and check this out. And I think this, the return of serve just absolutely speaks volumes about the intent of this left-handed player. And once the pattern, <laughs> it's kind of a, Again, kind of Bernie Tomic, you know, kind of, uh, kind of checked out of the point there. But uh, the pattern here is just so unmistakable. When this goes to his forehand, and I don't know if he got caught off guard maybe by the, the targeting of Dylan, or I'm not sure why he was sitting on a, a continental grip to kind of block this back. But you can just see that his intent here with this shot is so clear, how he just casually just guides it. And he's like, 
I'm just going to go ahead and start this off. Like, the, let the nightmare start rolling again. As soon as the ball lands there, he knows he has a good chance to be able to take control of the point. And so with that neutral, kind of casual, just block return and serve down the line, assuming he gets in a good position by the time Dylan hits, which he does, he's a little bit staggered over to the other side of the courts, he set up that same pattern again with his forehand here, Dylan's backhand over here, high percentage pattern, and boom, boom, boom. He can go ahead and just fall right into that familiar pattern. So he doesn't even have to hit any kind of big, spectacular shot to start off the point. As long as he can get the ball to that side and he can get Dylan playing on that pattern, the left-handed player feels super happy and feels really optimistic about his chances in the point. If seeing these pattern breakdowns has already been helpful, you can kind of already get the picture next time you play a left-handed player, what you're going to be doing or at least looking for from them. Do me a favor, click the like button. It really helps the video out tremendously. So many tennis players that need this information. It helps reach more players, which is our passion. Help as many players as possible. Watch this pattern here. This is just kind of like a doubling down or a continuation of that same kind of theme. You can see a little bit of kind of struggle back and forth how Dylan and the, the left-handed player exchange a couple down the line shots. And you'll see this from like Federer and Nadal when they play each other uh, frequently, well, where they'll kind of duel backhands and they'll get into uh, this pattern back and forth. And what's happening there, it's not just random down the line shots. What they're trying to do is establish their favorite pattern. Remember, the lefty wants this pattern and the righty very badly, usually, wants this pattern. And so we have those two forces that are playing against each other. So when the two of them both target this down the line shot, both of them are saying, no, I wanna go this way. No, I wanna go this way. And they're kind of going weakness to weakness, weakness to weakness, seeing who's gonna blink first. And it's a really interesting pattern to see play out. So Dylan, first, it kind of looked like he got a little bit jammed there. So I'm not sure if, if this first uh, shot was intentional or not down the line. I don't know if there's maybe a bad bounce on that, that clay court. But down the line shot here. And this is the point where a smart, experienced player, like both of these players are obviously, solid 5.0, 5.5 level players. The geometry here would dictate that this is the safe pattern. This is the smart pattern. So the fact that he's receiving kind of a neutral, you know, standard ball down the line, and then choosing to say, no, I'm not gonna go cross court. I'm just gonna go ahead and just send it right back where it just came to. To me, just really exemplifies this lefty tactic of, no, I'm just gonna go ahead and keep you over here. I, I wanna isolate that. So I see you going down the line. I know you'd probably like to go cross court on the do side, but I'm not gonna let you do that. So he just sends it right back down the line. And on the next shot, Dylan goes cross court and boom, now we're right back into the backhand jail with a lefty hitting his forehand and Dylan setting up for uh, a, whole, a whole mess of backhands. Now, interestingly here, the left-handed player just go ahead and pulls the trigger. He gets a little impatient here and just flat out goes for the winner and misses it. And even though he missed this one, I think this is just a good illustration of what it sets up eventually. When I play tennis, I hit a lot of forehand winners down the line because like this player, I set up and I establish a really strong pattern of telling the righty, you're gonna hit a whole mess of backhands. And then as the righty starts to cheat and shade a little bit further, a little bit further to kind of try to make up for that, it exposes this shot here. So I think that's what this player was looking for. Definitely, I think his margins were just too small, made the enforced error. But you can see the intent here. You can see the setup and see the thoughtfulness about how he's setting up the point. Quick update on our subscriber challenge before we get right back to the point analysis. In case you didn't know, on August 1st, I put out a subscriber challenge for the YouTube channel, Essential Tennis, and our, our goal was to get to 215,000 subscribers. And if we hit that goal, then I will put out a survey and ask what course you all want for free out of our entire library. It's up to a $400 online coaching program. And today is August 17th and we're at 2012. We're, we're definitely on track. We're a little over halfway through the month and we're over halfway towards our goal. At this point, we just need to keep the foot on the gas 
And this is just a win-win. You know, for us, of course, we want to grow. We want to help more players. That's our passion is to help more players play better tennis. And you want to play better tennis. And hook, hooking you up with a free program I know is going to help that happen. So just tap that subscribe button, and we're well on our way. This point really highlights the kind of tug of war back and forth between these two players. I'll go ahead and play it, watch it play out. We see the initial patterns start off in favor of Dylan on the deuce side. And we see him on a pattern that he likes. And then there's a down the line backhand from the lefty. And now everything is shifted. And lefty just keeps everything in that backhand corner until the point is over. And so it's just a very clean, clear cut example of Dylan playing high percentage cross courts. First shot going to the deuce side from the lefty. And Dylan, at this point, like, I really like his chances. Good topspin, strong shot, good depth. Uh, lefty, obviously, in a little bit of trouble there, just kind of going to the slice and playing a defensive, maybe neutral-ish, you know, shot back, keeping it nice and deep. And Dylan doing a good job of just kind of doing to the left-handed player what the left-handed player has been doing to him up, in, up until this point in the video. I've just been showing examples of this pattern going back and forth. And so now, for the first time, Dylan is sitting on his forehand to the left-handed player's backhand. So obviously, he would much prefer this most of the time since the lefty prefers his forehand side. High percentage pattern. And that all changes right here. Left-handed player receives this backhand and purposefully directs it down the line. Nothing spectacular. He's got plenty of height over the net, pretty casual swing. And he's got to work a little bit to get to the other side. And frankly, he left himself a little bit exposed here. Dylan had an opportunity cross court to go high percentage and, and catch him after the change of direction. But because he just kind of plays a standard rally ball, and maybe he actually got jammed there a little bit. Again, I, I missed that the, the first time I, uh, I watched this point. It might be another, yeah, I can see kind of like, Again, maybe a little bit of, uh, he got caught by the bounce a little bit. So that opportunity got passed by. And now left-handed player is like, thank you very much. I'm just going to go ahead and establish this pattern. So the whole point started off here. There's that one shot that went down the line. And now we're right back into lefty domination mode of him getting his stronger shot. And he got a little bit lucky here with just that shank and everything just stays to Dylan's uh, backhand side. So you can see the mentality here. You can see the intention behind it as the left-handed player starts the point in Dylan's favor and then flips it on purpose into his favor. This is how lefties are setting up their points against you. It's not an accident. This is how we're thinking about it. And so my goal with this video was to show you, was to kind of expose those patterns. Sorry, fellow left-handed players. If you're a right-handed player and this has been helpful, do me a favor and click the, the like button. If this has kind of illuminated the game plan of left-handed players. And in the next video in this series, I'm going to be showing you mistakes that right-handed players make. I'm going to show you examples of Dylan trying to beat this player, but having it backfire. And he kind of sabotages himself. Right-handed players do this all the time. That video might be published already. If it is, you can click on it right here. Go check it out now. If it's not available yet, then subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out when it's available. I'll see you in that next video. Thanks for watching.